Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are looking at another volume in the Whisper the Winged Unicorn series. This one is Whisper's Magic Mirror, starring Whisper the Winged Unicorn. Story by Jill Wolfe, illustrated by Katherine Wilson Heaney. Jill Wolfe was also the author of Christmas in Rainbow Forest, and I looked ahead. Jill Wolfe is also the author of all the remaining Whisper books that I own from this line. I have one book from their mid line. They tried to keep the audience that was reading the picture books and do young adult books. A little long for this format, but I wanted to be clear. So anyways, we are looking at Whisper's Magic Mirror, starring Whisper the Winged Unicorn. Ooh, that's a very nice shot of Whisper. Yes, yes. I, I could see someone copying this pose for a certain other white-winged unicorn who has a golden horn and rainbow mane and tail. <laughs> sorry, sorry, got stuck in my throat. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. You know, you really need to get that fanboy cleared up. Yeah, yeah. Beyond Rainbow Forest was a magic mountain made of glass. Whisper the Winged Unicorn heard her dragon friend Dorian speak of it many times, and she wanted to visit this mysterious place. But somehow she never did, until one afternoon near the end of summer. Whisper wandered alone in a meadow full of flowers, walking slowly with her head down. She wasn't paying any attention to where she was going. Suddenly, the sun seemed to grow brighter above her. Whisper looked up. She blinked and gasped in surprise. In front of her stood the magic mountain, shining like a diamond. Oh, her dragon friend was mentioned again. Yes, we haven't heard of him in a bit, because wouldn't have that have been a better choice to go check out the wolves? Yeah, big dragon would probably, yeah, scales much more harder to chew through than... Also much larger than the wolves. Yep, I don't know if he can breathe fire, but hey, also a plus. Yeah. Wow. They're just doing an amazing job on the illustrations in this book. It's beautiful, cried Whisper. Then very carefully, she began to climb among the sharp rocks and smooth cliffs of the mountain. Brooks and streams of silver water ran everywhere. Beside them grew grass, moss, trees, and tiny flowers. Halfway up the mountain, Whisper stopped by a waterfall. A large stream rushed over a cliff and fell into the pool below. Tiny rainbows glowed in the mist. What a lovely place, Whisper said to herself. Beside the waterfall was a wall of smooth, shiny rocks. When Whisper looked closely at the wall, she almost fell in the pool. The face of another unicorn stared back at Whisper. Which is not illustrated quite yet. The waterfall is. And her climbing. And anyone wondering why she's not flying, she's obviously taking a closer look at this. Then Whisper realized what she saw. It's a mirror, she said, and that's my reflection. I'll have to tell my friend Phineas that I found a mirror just like the one in the story he read to me. Whisper stood there for a long time, staring at her reflection. Is that really me? She wondered aloud. Her mane was like a rainbow and her horn was like gold. She had a long, lovely nose, dark eyelashes, and beautiful blue eyes. Why, I'm very pretty, Whisper said with a pleased smile and shook her mane. As she admired herself, a rough voice suddenly broke into her daydreams. Hmm. That is a very nicely framed shot. Mm-hmm. Though to me, the reflection seems a little bit off in the smile. Yeah, the way the mouth is shaped, I think, is a little bit off. But, you know, this is smooth rock, not an actual manufactured mirror. So it could have variances. It could also just be the um, illustrator didn't have the proper reference and just went for a reference of a horse facing 45 in the other direction. Possible. Also, has she never seen her reflection in a still pool of water? So, you think you're beautiful? Croaked a frog, who sat on the bank of the pool. What do you mean by that? Asked Whisper. Looks aren't everything, replied the frog. If what's inside is ugly, it doesn't matter how pretty you are on the outside. 
and if you stare into that mirror too long, you'll fall in, my proud and vain unicorn. Well, I never, said Whisper. I am not vain. I was only taking a little look at myself. Besides, it's none of your business. Yeah, she wasn't being vain at all. She was just like, oh, I am pretty. Which is different than, oh, look at how gorgeous I am. Which I've never done in the mirror and this was for an acting part. The frog just laughed and hopped into the pool with a splash. Whisper hurried away from the waterfall. She was sorry that she had been so rude to the frog, even though he had been rather rude too. Whisper returned every day to gaze at herself in the mirror. Soon she was spending all of her time there and none with her friends. She told them about the magic mirror. The mirror is wonderful. It shows how beautiful I am, Whisper said to her rabbit friends Jonathan and Bixby. Now we're getting a little vain. Just a tad. Also, look at that frowny face. Yeah, I was noticing about that. Like, does this get pointed out somewhere? Yes, you always look nice, said Bixby, who was tired of hearing Whisper brag about herself. Can't you play with us now? No, I don't have time. I'm going to the mountain. Besides, I might get dirty or mess up my mane, replied Whisper, and Bixby's ears drooped in sadness. On another day, Whisper told Grandmother Bear, I never knew I was so pretty. We already know that, Grandmother Bear snapped at her. Can't you talk about something else besides yourself? It's kind of interesting. The style is, hmm, it's, it's very nice. It's just something about, there's like a contrast between the style of the way Whisper's drawn and the way Grandmother Bear is drawn. She feels like, different in style overall compared to Whisper. Mm -hmm. Also, Whisper's looking a bit different from that beauty shot in the first illustration. Mm -hmm. Could be a visual cue. Whisper's friends grew tired of her vanity. They began to avoid her. When Bixby and Jonathan saw her coming, they hopped into the bushes. Grandmother Bear took another path so she wouldn't meet Whisper on the forest trail. If Phineas saw Whisper near his cave home, he ran inside and closed the door. Ouch. Yeah. I wonder what's wrong with everyone, Whisper asked herself. No one wants to talk to me anymore. I think I'll ask Dorian what's wrong. When she found Dorian, he at least did not run away. He listened patiently to her problem. Are we actually going to see the dragon this time? Well, he is mentioned, so... Oh, hello! Oh, haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, slightly different color scheme from the first book. Perhaps, Whisper, your friends think you have become a better friend to yourself and to the mirror, said Dorian. Maybe you've grown so vain you no longer think of them. That's not true, Dorian. I still love my friends, but the mirror is special to me, cried Whisper and ran away toward the mountain. While you're looking in the mirror, ask yourself what you really see there. Dorian called after her. When Whisper reached the waterfall, the frog was there as usual, but he said nothing. Dorian's words rang in Whisper's ears as she looked in the mirror. Whisper couldn't help feeling that she was wonderful. She looked so pretty. She leaned closer to the mirror. My eyes are beautiful blue, just like the sky, sighed Whisper, her nose almost touching the mirror. Then she fell in the water with a big splash. Oh, uh, oh, exclaimed Whisper as she spit out water and swam for the bank. When she climbed onto the grass, her mane stuck to her neck and her tail drooped between her legs. The frog croaked with laughter. What are you laughing at? demanded Whisper. Look in the mirror now, said the frog. He was most definitely laughing at her. Whisper looked over her shoulder and saw what a mess she was. Her mane looked stringy, and her face was covered with tiny green leaves from the pool. I look horrible, she groaned. I told you if you looked in the mirror too long, you would fall in, said the frog. Now you see what you really look like when you're so vain. No more magic mirror for me, promised Whisper, shaking the water from her mane. Without a backward glance, she walked away from the mirror and down the mountain to Rainbow Forest. Dorian waited for her in the upper meadow. I'm sorry that I've been so vain, Whisper told him. I hope my friends will forgive me. I think they already have, 
said Dorian, and stepped aside. Behind him were Jonathan, Bixby, Phineas, and Grandmother Bear. What happened, Whisper? You're all wet, cried Bixby. You look awful. But I feel much better. I found out it's very foolish to spend so much time with a silly mirror. I'd rather be with my friends, Whisper said with a happy smile that made her look beautiful again to everyone. The end. It does actually a, say the end. With a cute little ink illustration of Whisper. Yes. No color. So we assume it's Whisper because we haven't met any other winged unicorns in the books that we've read. So far, yep. So what did you think? This was never really one of my favorites because it's basically Whisper being a brat and getting obsessed with herself. I mean, there are lots of children's books that have the lesson of spend time with your friends, cherish your friends, appreciate your friends. Vanity. Yes. But if she's the only winged unicorn and none of the other forest creatures that we've seen so far are really horse-like in any way, what does she have for standards for beauty? How does she know she's beautiful? Because tastes in beauty are very much taught because different cultures have different standards of what beauty is. And as you said before, hasn't she seen herself in the pools or something like that? Or because of the way the light was reflected off of here, it was a much more steady image? I don't know. Uh, it just seems strange that she's never been around still water because the very first picture in the first book that we read from the series has Whisper dangling her forelegs into a pool of water. Looking at a reflection. She can actually see it right there. Yeah, so the reflection's actually illustrated. And it says, even in the beginning, she peered into the quiet little pool. So she was looking at the water, which was still enough to hold her reflection. And there's plenty of still water because there was that pool and then there was also the water that she fell into when she took her big jump trying to fly. So yeah. Yeah, I can see it in other situations. So I remember a not a children's book, but a book called Six of Swords, where women who had a special power were actually weakened in that power if they ever saw their reflection. So anyone who had a glimmer of that power, in order to protect it, they were kept away from all mirrors. Hmm. So they never actually knew what they looked like. Interesting. So, shall we finish up this episode? Mm -hmm. This is Whisper's Magic Mirror, starring Whisper the Winged Unicorn. Story by Jill Wolfe, illustrated by Catherine Wilson Heaney. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, we do have a whole playlist for Whisper the Winged Unicorn. Also, we have a lot of other Ember's Reading Room videos and videos in general on the Lux Analysis channel. We've kind of been at this a while. If you'd like to try to track down a copy of this book, please look below for an Amazon link. If it's in print, we'll try to provide one for you. If you just want to go shopping, check out the Ebates link. Sign up and get cash back for shopping at places you probably already shop at. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel. Thank you.